Hi, my name is Tamar and this is Rocket. In this video series I'll be discussing one book in detail uh, without cutting a lot in the editing process so that's what you're just going to see it might have some little cuts where I set things up or things like that uh, or if I just talk bullshit but for the rest it will be very raw cut because I don't have time to edit actually because I'm a student and also that's why the lighting is like super bad at this moment because it's November it's very rainy outside and I wanted to film during daytime and it is actually still daytime but the sun is already going down and it's really annoying and that's why the lighting is shit uh, but I hope you bear with me when I'm going to talk about today's book timer for 20 minutes so that I don't talk longer than that and in that time I'll be discussing the number one ladies detective agency by Alex Ma Alexander McCall Smith what a name, what a mouthful um, I read this book in the beginning of August it took me like two weeks um, because I was very busy and it was very, not very compelling I gave it two stars and I'm going to tell you why um, so first uh, I'm going to tell you why I read it then I'll go through the couple rating and then through my tabs um, I read this book because we bought it in England uh, together with the other two books that um, two books in the series this is the 2016 and 2017 releases um, and this is the first one from 1998 and um, we bought it as a, a three for ten pounds and um, my dad bought it and I was interested because I'm interested to read more mystery cozy mystery and everything in the genre except this did disappoint and why it was on my TBR for November because it fitted one of the prompts of the readathon I was doing and I also talked about it with Hannah from Ladet M and she read these books in her youth and has very fond memories of it and uh, asked me what do you think of it, is it still worth a read? and the short answer is no, it's not and the long answer is let's get into why it's not worth your time and I, the book, first of all, the book is about uh, Mama, Mama Rots, or Motswe, um, and a ladies detective in Botswana, um, uh, who ser solves uh, mysteries, uh, small crimes, uh, things like that. Um, and it's written by Alexander McCall Smith, um, a British guy. But he's born in uh, uh, Zimbabwe, and uh, uh, yes, uh, and that's uh, he's, he's a, like a, a, a white man, and ta um, writing a, a woman of color <laughs> in a country he isn't from, which is shouldn't be a problem in itself, but it shows that it had to have its problems uh, in the book, and I'll get to, into that. Um, uh, it's the first time I've read from this author, so uh, I went in it ve very blindly besides knowing about the author and a little bit about the story. Um, and uh, the story just takes on how she became the ladies detective agency in this place, um, her upbringing um, and uh, how, the, how, this, how it started. Um, which is very interesting to read about, but also there are some very harrowing points with all, which I'll point out later. I gave it a 6 for characters because the characters are really fun in this book but they were lacking, they were not very well developed, they didn't have a lot of uh, interesting things, not very layered at all really and uh, the thing that annoys me a lot throughout this book is it really looks like these people uh, in Botswana think very simply, it's very simplistic that they are just living a happy life and they don't like America and that it's just the best place to ever be, it's very romanticized um, which I don't think is a great portrayal even though it also discusses like unethical things that are happening like walking in the mines and um, 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 child killings and things like that it's all discussed but it still looks like oh but what am I happy to live here which sometimes feels a bit weird 
Um, the atmosphere was a five star. It wasn't very well developed, even though it's a different uh, setting to what I'm used to. Uh, I didn't feel very immersed in um, the, the countryside and where everything was happening. Uh, I gave the writing three stars because, especially, it's written like so simply, but it's not a children's book at all with the con contents. It's like such simplistic writing that found like it felt like it was trying to make the story simpler like that the story and everything that happened is so simple which it's much more complex and um, the writing really made it look like these characters were so simple and simplistic which is was just really really annoying um, and then the plot I gave four stars it was boring at times some chapters were very long some were very short which wasn't nice and um, it was so I mean it kept me reading because I was interested in annotating it not because the story made it that you wanted to progress especially since it does deals with different cases like some come back from like earlier parts in the book but the only there there are not a lot of characters that like stay throughout um, which doesn't make you bond with them, which makes you care less about the plot. And the intrigue was the three. It took me like two weeks to read this book. It's like 200 pages and it's not hard to read. Um, was not that compelling. Um, and it doesn't make you, after reading like one story, that you're like, oh, I must read the other one. It's not that because it doesn't uh, nicely continue with it. Uh, the logic was a four star, some things were just so simplistic as I told you and it just didn't make sense, which was so annoying um, that the intrigue is so low that because you have to suspend your disbelief to think that they think so simply and I just don't think that's logically. The enjoyment was a five, I enjoyed parts of it, uh, I didn't enjoy it like the other half of it, that's, that's the truth, and that came out uh, as a 4.29. 29 and which is a two two point high five stars and which is still okay all things considered um but not great in any means um i'll first go into the trigger warnings uh, because there are many and then i'll go into them where you can find some of these trigger warnings um one of them is misogyny which is um, dealt with in the book like there are misogynistic men but they are also like frowned upon and made fun of and uh, questioned in the book which was so interesting to read because of course the writer is a man and he's bashing men which is like iconic but uh, also a bit out of the blue there's also fatness as kink it's always like seen uh, uh, it confused me so much like um, it because it is, was always like seen like, oh, um, uh, fat people, that's, that's like good. It may, shows you that, that these people are good, that they are healthy, that everything is good with them, and that y you must have a wife that's fat. And things like that were said in this book, and I was like, that uh, it just didn't make me feel good. I'm not a representative of that community, of course, but especially as someone <laughs> who is like, underweight it's felt very jarring to hear those things and be like yeah but what if you read this book and you're not that that must also be weird or what if um, your weight is such an important as important to for who you are and uh, shows character it, it doesn't shouldn't be such a big influence on if you like someone or not and that was really really jarring to read um, there's abuse, rape and assault, um, which happens because uh, the husband that um, uh, Mama Rotsme or Matsue has at the start of this book um, is uh, uh, abused to her. Well, the first thing is she, he, they marry and he rapes her, then she gets pregnant, she tells him that and um, he then assaults her and dumps her. Um, and um, after that you also learn uh, about uh, child death because um, the child of Mamara Motswa only lived five days which is a continuous thing that comes back uh, throughout the book which is super harrowing to read about 
and uh, such a heavy topic that's not deal a lot with in depth which I found sad kind of because I wanted to know more about that if that was a story about this woman learning to live after she has been through all this and has happened everything has happened if that would have been the story I would have been so much more interested in it but it didn't deliver enough on that part and um, there's xenophobia which is specifically like oh we are we as uh, inhabitants of Botswana are better than uh, all the other uh, people in the countries uh, around us and they are like uh, frowned upon and they are like uh, of course the criminals and of course the bad guys and they don't they they don't have good intent and which was so annoying to read about because it felt very elitist to say like oh but our people are good people which ha ah, I just couldn't get into and there's um, ableism especially well there there are like weird focuses on there are a few disabled characters throughout this book and the way they're described is just so <sighs> it didn't make me feel good it made me feel very weird about it and I don't know um, and there's Muti and um, which um, is like uh, which is harrowing to read about, by the way, which is when um, alternative medicine to protect people is, is made from human uh, bones or flesh, like human uh, parts, uh, especially uh, like children, because it's believed to have like a protective and uh, magical uh, abilities if you wear something like that on you. And there's one of the cases that fo uh, focuses on uh, a person that found Muti in a car uh, of a rich man. Um, which is so harrowing to read about and I read upon it and it's still something that sometimes happens where children are killed for their parts. Um, which um, just puts in perspective that sometimes you read about those things in horror books or anything like that, but it's still a thing that happens in our in our world, and it's not a foreign, not a, like a weird uh, ultimate universe concept. But it still happens that people are killed because of their the the thought that that human parts uh, have magical abilities, which is so sad. And it's great that this book touches upon it, but also a bit, <laughs> a bit weird. Uh, and then ageism. Sometimes it's been like, oh, but you're like young, and you, you and that's because you do, you don't know things because you're young, which is just like, just in general, a lot of things to consider and some things are just great, like talking about certain topics of this, like that I I know more about this through this book because I looked into things now, but uh, it's hard because uh, I really wanted to enjoy this and there were parts that were funny I really enjoyed the reading experience not the read the book and um, I tapped some of the things that were just problematic uh, some were harrowing some are I wanted to discuss and some are funny uh, and I'll just go through a few um, and this made me laugh uh, on page 7 of my uh, edition, that's the 20th anniversary edition, it says uh, now I am uh, the number one sip oh um, uh, she uh, before she became a ladies detective and she, she was in uh, accountancy uh, only it, it is about uh, a different woman a woman she talks to, that's a woman she talks to and uh, who who's an accountant and now now I'm the one, number one sub accountant and I don't think I can can go any further because all the men are worried that I'll make them look stupid, which was so funny to read. Like it takes the piss out of men thinking they're better than women and anything like that and they having the higher jobs and things like that, which was so funny to read. So I thought, oh, okay, we're starting good. Um, then we get into her, to the backstory of her dad and how she got the money to, um, to set up the detective agency. Um, 
which is like a harrowing part because her dad worked like in the mines and um, which were very deadly and this is a, a line from that the mines eat men even, even when you have left them the ma mines may still be eating what the mines eat men even when you have left them the mines may still be eating you because of course um, uh, of the like uh, bad, bad um, air and things you got into your lungs which uh, still kills people and even in the mines they kill a lot and um, this made me frown because I don't know what the author was trying to do with it um, and a, a, a part be because there is no difference between white men and black men we are all the same we are just people and it really felt like um, it sometimes then denies that there are problems with racism especially because um, even though we're all people which is true it's still uh, there's still a difference in the perception in the world and you cannot just close your eyes and say oh we're all people and then go and ignore the fact that um, people experience different things because of their uh, skin color um. oh yeah th this was said to her dad uh, and it, when he was going back because he saw someone die um, you go back home to your wife he said if a man leaves his wife too long she starts to make trouble for him believe me go back and give her more children which I don't think is put in there as like a good thing but it's also not challenged so I don't know if it has been seen, seen as a good thing or just as a thing that happened but it was a very weird sentence and please let me know if you have any thoughts on the things I point out because um, I would like to know uh, what you guys think of it oh yeah this is one of uh, one of the weird uh, fat phobia kind of sentences uh, Precious was like her mother who was a good fat woman like how you can describe people in so many different ways and you just decide to call her good and fat and that's it where is your depth the ta annoying oh yeah there's um also a part which I found just so uh, degrading where um, um, uh, because uh, the main character is raised by a cousin of her dad for a longer time but this person is only only described and written as, as the cousin she doesn't have a name she doesn't have a voice it's just the cousin the cousin even though this cousin does great things there she doesn't get a name which I found so weird um. what's the sentence that did? <laughs> this was a weird thing because I studied theology and I didn't think we get well, I mean uh, you have to know that uh, the main character is Christian I think I mean there is Christianity mentioned a few times in this book and this is one of the sentences um, she could not believe that the Lord had walked she could not believe that the Lord had walked on water you just couldn't do that nor that had she believed the story about the feeding of the 5,000 which was equally impossible there were, these were lies she was sure of it and the biggest lie of all was that the Lord had no daddy on this earth it was untrue because even children knew that you need a father to make a child and it will apply to cattle and chicken and people all the same as of course a Christian I'm like but it's not it's it's not about logic like faith is not all based on logic it doesn't have to all be logical it's about belief which I won't go into it further but also the fact that the word every time someone is in dead they're be being called daddy instead of dead which is like 
uh, it made me feel so squeamish because it's like daddy is such a nah nah I don't I don't think it's a great thing to call everyone daddy and um, if it's you're just talking about someone's dad Oh wow, I said I was going to talk for 20 minutes, I only have this part for 34 pages and <laughs> I only talk for 20 minutes. Wow, um, let me wrap this up a bit <laughs> um, and I'll just go through the things that I found problematic and not especially like harrowing or anything. I have a few tabs that were like for things that were really problematic. Um oh. oh yeah, the the sentence she was bright academically, was consistently giving glowing reports from the school and was expected to make a good marriage in the fullness of time, probably on her twentieth birthday, which Mr. Patel had felt was precisely the right time for a girl to marry. But this character is challenged. I think you have, I think we'll round it up with that. You have a lot of problematic uh, themes in this book and like half of them are challenged and the other half, half aren't uh, challenged. But it's the, I think the main problem I have with this book to round it up is the way of describing it. It's not what's described because most of it is challenged, not everything, but most of it is challenged and it's just the writing style makes it all so simplistic and like it feels very degrading to the characters to make them so simple and to so uh, surface level which uh, I think uh, just hinders the enjoyment because I think if you if you would have gone more into certain topics it would have been so much more interesting and it would also um, then it would also be possible to deal more with the harrowing and problematic things that happen in this book even though they're partly dealt with, partly not. Um, so, to conclude, conclude my rambles, which is actually what Rockhood is kind of like, I ramble about a book for 20 minutes and then I wrap it up. Um, I'm not going to continue with this series unless I have to for like a video or anything. I won't be continuing, I won't be um, saying you have to read this. I think if you had this on your TBR or if you have read it as a child, don't reread it or don't read it because it's not worth your time. I think there are better cozy mysteries out there and I'm willing to find out what they are and if I like them. If you liked this video, go leave a like down below, subscribe on my channel, you can find my socials and my wishlist down below and leave a comment um, and um, if you um, have seen it to the end, leave a, a, I don't know, this is an animal emoji or a cup emoji or a house like you can see on the cover of this book uh, and uh, until next time, see ya later!